If you're joining us online, we just want to say thank you for joining us. We're so glad that you're with us. And, and um, I believe I've got a word this morning to really encourage us. But this is the time of year that us as Australians take a, take a moment to pause and take a moment to remember. Remember our Anzacs. And you may be joining us online and you're not from Australia or maybe you're recent to Australia and you may not know what that means. But the Anzacs is the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps. And April 25th, we pause and we celebrate Anzac Day, which marks the landing in Gallipoli in 1915. And I'm really not sure if us living in 2022 can fully comprehend the enormous sacrifice that our young nation made during the years of World War I. A total of 420,000 Australians enlisted for service in World War I, representing close to 39% of the entire male population at the time. As a young nation, we sacrificed plenty. 60,000 of those who served in World War I were killed, 156,000 wounded. And that's why we read from Lawrence Binion's poem, For the Fallen, each year these words. They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. To which we respond, lest we forget. Now, I want to take a moment in this morning's service, and I, and I think it's fitting that we pray now for our active service men and women who are devoting their lives to the protection of our country. And I wonder if you just close your eyes in this moment, let's, let's pray. And it's just not me praying up here alone. Let's agree together. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the sacrifice of so many men and women who have chosen to protect this nation. And Lord, right now I pray your protection over them, Lord God. I pray for wisdom where wisdom is needed. Father, for the families of those who are serving, I pray that you would be with them. Even if they do not know you yet, I thank you that you love them. And I pray your protective power over them today. Lord, I pray for our reserves, Father, that you would just continue to strengthen them, that they would be courageous. Lord, I thank you that we live in a free nation. And I thank you that it's because of the sacrifice of so many. We bless them today. We honor them today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. See, we want to honor and respect with thankfulness and gratitude the incredible courage and sacrifice shown by our armed forces, past, present, and future. And we do that earnestly. But in this room, we can say with confidence that our trust is not in our armed services, our armed forces. Our trust is in the Lord. As the psalmist writes in chapter, tw- uh, chapter 20, verse 7, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. We trust in the name of the Lord our God. If you're taking notes this morning, I want to preach on an important topic and fitting for this weekend. And I've titled this message, Remember to Remember. Because as we remember the sacrifice of our Anzacs, so too are we called to remember the works of our God. Because remembrance is a God idea. It is a biblical idea. God designed this principle and brings it up over and over and over again through Scripture that we are to remember. If you've read any of the, New, uh, any of the Old Testament for more than three minutes, you would stumble across the words, remember the God who let, let us out of Egypt. Remember the God who parted the waters. Remember 
This is a God idea. It's not a modern invention. And it wasn't invented for times such as this date on the calendar. This is a God idea. And we need to remember to remember. As we read in Deuteronomy chapter 4, we see it right here. Verse 9. Only take care and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget. That sounds familiar. The things that your eyes have seen, unless they depart from your heart all the days of your life, make them known to your children and your children's children. How on the day that you stood before the Lord your God at Horeb, the Lord said to me, gather the people to me that I may let them hear my words so that they may learn to fear me all the days that they live on the earth that they may teach their children so. Lest we forget what the Lord has done and what He is still to do. We need to remember. We need to remember. God called His people to remember Him and all they had done for Him. Why is this important? So I'm still studying. This is a sucker for punishment. And part of my research is actually about time. And how our understanding of the past, present, and future interact with and affect different parts of our thinking, different parts of our life. And one thing that is very, very clear is that it's actually important to have a good balance and a good uh, uh, understanding of all three, past, present, and future. Because looking into the future gives us hope. Looking at the present gives us purpose. But looking at the past gives us confidence. And we actually need all three of these things. Because if we neglect things, things get thrown a little bit out of balance. Because we need the reference of back then to now, so we can see how God's moved in our lives, to get us from there to here. And it's something... That's way harder to do when we're so absorbed in the present. Let me tell you, the enemy loves to narrow your focus to the right now because it robs us of hope and it robs us of confidence. Because when we're looking at the right now, everything's 2D. There's no perspective. It's the right now. It's flat. This is all that I can see. And if things are bad, then all things are bad for all time because we're not looking back. We're not for looking forward. We're looking at the right now. Everything is bad. We have no perspective. The enemy loves to rob us of perspective. Why? Because if, if he can take away our hope, if he can take away our confidence, we're not left with a whole lot. We're weakened. We're lost. We're immobile. We're frozen in place. We're at the mercy of our circumstances, and I read Scripture, and I know that God has not called us to be mercy, uh, 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 left to the mercy of our circumstances. He's called you for more. But to seize the more, we need to be confident and understand our hope to then place where we are right now. Because when we look at the right now, we say things like, God, why am I here? What are you doing? Where are you? Nothing makes sense. Am I doing enough? Am I doing the right thing? Is it all worth it? These are all questions that can only be asked when we've neglected remembering and misplaced our hope. See, Lenita and I have lived through this over and over again, particularly in terms of our, of our finances. When we were heading, leading up to our wedding, when you open the bank account and you're starting to measure how things are based off how many, you know, happy meals you can afford, things are pretty scary. And I know there's people in this room that may be facing those sorts of situations now. But see, once you live through it, once you move through it, we know it wasn't us. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it was not us. Because right when this one bill was due, we get an envelope for us, 
almost the perfect amount and a little bit more for the exact bill that we need to be paid. It's like, oh, like, I always hear that from stage. I'm like, yeah, so have I. I've grown up in church. I always hear those, the letterbox, and it just magically, that's our God. And look, maybe, maybe we'll put a different spin on it. Just at the right time, uh, uh, the opportunity for this small window of work opens up that allows us to provide for what we need to do. There you go. That's a bit better than the magical envelope. But both have happened to us. See, but we can enter a season where we're starting to get down to that Happy Meal maths. It's not a thing. It is now. Take that one. And things are looking tight. Do you know what the instant reaction is? It's not, remember when God... No, it's never that. I wish I was that faithful all the time. But when you log on to that bank app and you see how that's looking, and it's just, what are we going to do? I'm not going to say show of hands, but I know there's people in this room that know exactly what that feels like. But let me tell you, after that, take a step back and say, that's my present, but look where God has brought me from. Look where he has brought me from. So already just taking a step back from where the right now is and saying, God, I know you are good. You've done it before and you can do it again. That's not something we sing because it sounds poetic. That's biblical. That's the promise of God. We can stand on his word. We can stand on what he's done because he is our provider. Maybe for you it's health. Maybe for you it's relationships. In all of these things, let me tell you, when we remember what God has done, it starts to put things into perspective. And it's when we have that perspective, we can find confidence in the right now because it's not based on circumstance. It's not based on the right now. It's based on what He has done. When we use the past as a reference, we see that God has taken us from that place to where we are now. And then we add in hope, the hope we have for the future, the hope we have in Jesus. So we can see that where he is taking, we can see where he's taking us. Therefore, the right now is a necessity to get from back then to soon to be. Perspective. But we need to remember, because if we lose track, we lose our confidence. If we lose track, we lose our way. And it might be that you're in that necessity season to get from back there to soon to be. I pray that you'd be encouraged today. It's not hang on tight to get through it. No, no, it says in Psalms, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. You're not setting up camp, you're walking through. And He is with you. What more do we need if He is with us? That's why the writer of Hebrews says this. Hebrews 13 verse 5. Don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So we can say with what? confidence. The Lord is my helper, so I, have, uh, 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 so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Remember your leaders who taught you the Word of God. Think of all the good that has come from their lives and follow the example of their faith. Jesus Christ was the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He's the same. He's the same provider. He's the same healer. He is the same comforter. He is the same one that walked with me then and will continue to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He is the same. The God we have seen move is moving now and will continue to move tomorrow. Amen. I love it. God called 
the people to remember him and all that he had done for them. And we see this repeated over and over and over again. Exodus 13, 3. Then Moses said to the people, Remember this day in which you came out from Egypt, out of the house of slavery, for by a strong hand the Lord brought you out from this place. No leavened bread shall be eaten. Numbers 15, 40. So you shall remember and do all my commandments and be holy to your God. Remember. Deuteronomy 7, 17. If you say in your heart, these nations are greater than I, how can I dispose, uh, uh, dispossess them? What? How can you say that? You shall not be afraid of them, but you shall remember what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all Egypt, the great trials that your eyes saw, the signs, the wonders, the mighty hand, the outstretched arm by which the Lord your God brought you out. So will the Lord your God do to all the peoples of whom you are afraid. Our God has done it before and he will do it again. He is saying, remember that I have moved, that I am moving now and that I will continue to move. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He is working all things for the good of those who loved him. His mind hasn't changed. His mission hasn't changed. It remains the same. His love has always and will always stand true. He will never fail. He will never fail. That is what the Lord is saying. Remember who you serve. Remember who I am. Church, we need to remember. We need to remember. Deuteronomy 8.18. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth that he may confirm his, com- uh, his covenant that he swore to your fathers as it is this day. First Chronicles 16, 11. Seek out the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember. I hope you're picking up on something this morning, church. Remember the wonders he has done, his marvels, and the judgments he has pronounced. O offspring of his servant Israel, O sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he is the Lord our God. His judgments carry throughout the earth. Remember his covenant forever and the word he ordained for a thousand generations. These aren't just words we sing. These are words of worship. These are words of praise. These are words of confidence. Why? Because he's done it before. He is continuing to move and he will forever, forever, forever reign. Just reading those scriptures, they, we don't even need to expound that. We don't need to even pull that apart. We don't need to delve into the original. We don't need to do any of that because it's encouraging. There's a faith that builds simply by reading his word and letting it speak to your heart. Because in this, we see the heart of God. We can be encouraged. God clearly wants us to remember Not only is remembering a source of our confidence, but it also is what keeps us on track. Absolutely overused, horrible metaphor. If we launch a rocket at the moon and we're off by a degree, it's way off by the time we get there. If you're the astronaut, you've got no instruments and you're just floating in space, you've got very little reference whether you're going in the right direction or not. You're just a blip out there. You actually need a starting point. Like you need to measure trajectory, you know, science stuff. Don't understand it. 
We'll get someone smart up here in a second. But the reality is we need a starting point. You need a reference point. You need to know where something started to understand if it's going in the right track. So it is with our personal histories. So it is with our spiritual walk. So it is with our lives as, as a whole. We need to know where God has, st- has brought us from to understand where He is taking us, to understand where He has already brought us. And it's remembering that keeps us on track. A classic example of this is in Judges at the death of Joshua. In chapter 2, verse 6, after Joshua sent the people away, each of the tribes left to take possession of the land allotted to them. And the Israelites served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and the leaders who outlived him, those who had seen all the great things the Lord had done for Israel. Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at age 110. They buried him in the land he had been allocated in Timnasara, in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gash. Now now, now listen to this. Verse, Verse 10, everything shifts. See if we can spot the difference. After that generation died, another generation grew up who did not acknowledge the Lord or remember the mighty things he had done for Israel. The Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight and served the images of Baal. They abandoned the Lord and the God of their ancestors who had brought them out of Egypt. What didn't they do? They didn't remember. Now, we read a little bit earlier that it was actually the responsibility to also teach our children how to remember. What better plug for kids' ministry? What better plug for youth ministry? What better plug for allowing the Scripture to be present in our homes 24-7? Why? We need to teach our children to remember. We need to teach our children to remember. Because we see that the lack of remembering what God has done because they didn't see it. What happened? They went off track. They went off track. Nothing today has changed. God still commands us, His people, to remember. Our ongoing continual remembrance is essential for us to live out God's redemptive vision for our lives. And we forget, when, we, when we start to forget what He's done in our life, when we, when we let go of what He's done outlined in the Word, life gets pretty pear-shaped pretty quickly. All of a sudden, that financial challenge starts to freak us out, and then we start to make rash decisions, and then we start chasing the wrong things, and then all of a sudden, are we we where God wants us? No, because we tried to figure it out in our own strength. But when we remember that He has moved and continues to move, I love what it says in Proverbs 29, verse 18. Where there is no prophetic vision... The people cast off restraint, but blessed is he who keeps the law. See, vision is a a picture of a preferred future. But prophetic vision, the word in in this passage, the prophetic vision is a picture of God's perfect future. But when there is no prophetic vision, people cast off restraint, or as the NLT puts it, I love this, they run wild. When you stop remembering God and what He has done, you will lose the reference point to see God's vision for your life. Because we've got to understand that prophetic vision doesn't happen in the present. That prophetic vision is something that was spoken over in the past. And if we lose sight of that, what God spoke to us, maybe it was when we first gave our life to Jesus. Maybe it was that prophetic word that was spoken over us. Maybe it was just that verse that just leaps out and planted itself in our memory. It's like that stuff is to be used in the present to direct us towards the prophetic vision that God has for our life. It's something that 
lives in the past. And we lose that. I've got notebooks. I've got recordings of people speaking over me or things that I've written down or dreams that I had. And I I found like a a dreams kind of buckety kind of list, more of a dreams list from like uh, 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 2009, maybe 2010. And I was reading it. And I found myself, it was actually amazing. Tick, tick, tick. I've written that list one night, not really thinking about a whole lot and obviously probably procrastinating an assignment of some description. And I wrote this list and I hadn't looked at it literally since the day I wrote it. And then I flick forward and what do I see? God, you are good. God, you are good. God, you are good. God, you are good. Even now, I'm feeling, I'm feeling my faith rise. Why? Because I'm remembering what he's done. I'm remembering what he's done. So often when things go wrong or we fall into strife and trouble, it's because we fail to remember. We fail to remember what God has said to us. We fail to remember His leading in our life. This is why God continuously instructed His people to remember. To remember. 